All right, this is section 15.2, part A. I'm going to divide 15.2 uh, into two different parts. Um, they can easily be done in one section, but uh, later on in the chapter, we're going to have another chapter, well, another topic, which is divided into two sections. So I think it makes sense to divide this one as well, because it's a similar breakdown. So this particular section is on line integrals of functions. And so what I'll do in this case, and I'll do this a lot in this section, is I'm going to introduce this in terms of a particular question about a particular quantity. Then I'll introduce the notation for this quantity, and then we'll talk about how we evaluate it. So for line integrals of functions is the situation. And we won't be very technical with these things about how these integrals show up, because there's an integral that's about to appear. Um, but in any case, here's the situation. So suppose that C is a curve. This can either be in 2D or 3D. And suppose that the function F gives the density, and let's say mass density, uh, at the point, at each point. Now, just to clarify what I mean by this, let's do clarification via an example. Suppose that, um, so for example, suppose C is this curve right here. Say, I'm gonna make it blue, so we'll make it, remember, so for a curve, it doesn't necessarily need to be curvy, it could be a bunch of lines, so. Let's make it like this. And let's make this go to one and to one right here. So this is RC. And suppose the density at x comma y, suppose this is given by f of x, y equals say x squared plus y squared. So what that means is and so this density, for example, we could say maybe in grams per centimeter. So what this means for, is, for example, at say one comma one, the density is f of one comma one, which is two grams per centimeters. So that would be on the picture, that would be right here. Whereas, for example, at, say, um, 1 comma 0, the density is f of 1 comma 0, which is 1 gram per centimeter. And on the picture, that would be right here at 1, 0 on the x-axis. So the idea here is that at different points, you can have different densities. And so then you might ask this obvious question is, um, what's the total mass of C? You can think of C as like a piece of wire or something like that. And in this case, this would be in grams. Now, the same question applies whenever you have any sort of density function. It doesn't have to be mass density. It could be electromagnetic field density, like anything that you can add up to get a total. But mass is a really good way of thinking about it because it's something that makes sense for us all. Like we understand what it means to have a certain mass. Right? So the notation for this, so there's an integral notation that represents this, is that this quantity is represented by So what it's called is called the line integral. Of the function. And this is denoted by the integral over C of f of x, y, z 
ds. And this is a lowercase s. That's sort of important because later on there's an integral that has an uppercase s. So um, try to make sure this lowercase so you don't confuse yourself. And so then the big question, of course, is uh, how do we evaluate this? So as we go through this chapter, there are going to be four new integrals that show up. And for each integral, there will be one or more ways of evaluating them. Now, this may sound a little overwhelming, but it isn't. Things should be fairly clear as we go, and I'll try to clarify in each section. But for this particular integral, there is just one way, right? For line integrals of functions, there is one single way. So there is but one way. And this is what it is. So the method is as follows. What we do is we parameterize the curve C. So we um, find a parameterization of C. So this will be like an R of T. And so it's an R of T. So I'll write this in three dimensions. It'll have an, an I component, which will be, let's say, X of T. It'll have a J component, Y of T. It'll have a K component, Z of T. And T, T will be between, this is with T between A and B. And then what happens is this integral that we're looking for, the one that one that represents the mass. This becomes the integral from A to B. And then what happens is this function f contains x's and y's and z's. Those get replaced by x of t, y of t, z of t. Now, what also happens is because we're changing variables, really, right, we're going from x and y and z to t, there's sort of something like a Jacobian that appears in a way, it's sort of playing the role of the Jacobian. In this case, this is the magnitude of r prime of t. And this is done dt. And then we just evaluate. This is a regular calc 1 integral. And that is it. That is the only way to do it. So let me do two examples. I'll do a really simple one. Um, and then I'll do this one with the picture that we just drew. I'll, I want to do the one with the picture second for a very specific reason. But um, I'll do a different one first. So first example. Let's let C be the semicircle. And picture's not necessary, but it's good to do to practice our parameterizations. So it'll be the, say the top semicircle. We'll give it radius, say seven. And we will say, um, suppose the density is given by f of xy is y. So the higher you up on the curve, the more dense you are, like up at 0, 0,7, the density is 7. And let's say grams per centimeters, just so we can have a unit there. Let's say find a mass. So the solution. So all we do is we say, well, first, we know the mass is denoted by this integral. Right, it's the integral over C of F ds. So then we have to parameterize C. Now we've seen the semicircle before. This is the parameterization, or this is a parameterization. This is with 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to pi. Now, I'm going to make this comment at the end, but it doesn't matter which parameterization you use, right? Any parameterization that parameterizes C will work, right? This is sort of the obvious one, but there are others. And if you used a different one, you would get the same final answer, even if the integral looked a little different. So then we just follow the rules, right? So the rule says I have the integral from A to B of F, and then I have the magnitude of R prime. So let's do R prime first. So R prime is negative 7 sine t i plus 7 cosine t j. We need this magnitude. It's the square root of 49 sine squared plus 
plus 49 cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, so that's the square root of 49, which is 7. So thus the mass, this guy. So let's see what happens. This becomes an integral from 0 to pi. The y here gets replaced by y of t, right? So to see what's about to happen, this guy gets replaced by y of t. That y of t is this thing up here. So that's what goes into here. So that becomes um, 7 sine t. And then we get that 7, that magnitude. So that 7 comes from right there. That's this guy. And this is now dt. This is a nice straightforward integral. That's not a dot product, that's just a multiplication. So this is easy to do, so we'll finish it up because it just takes a second. So this is 49 sine. So the antiderivative of that is negative 49 cosine t. So if we plug in pi, we get negative 1. And then subtract a negative 49, plug the 0 and we get 1. So we get 49 plus 49 is 98, and this would be in grams. And that is the final answer. That is it. So let me do one more example. So I'll do the original one that we had with the two lines and the, uh, and the mass of x squared plus y squared. So this was this example. This was, uh, let's see, the, it was the curve that had, well, it was two line segments. So let me read for all those was this guy and this guy. And they went to 1 and up to 1 respectively. And here we have the density. So this is C. We have the density f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. We want to find the mass. So as before, the mass, as the example on the left, the integral over C of x squared plus y squared ds. So now the c in this case is sort of divided into two pieces. It's two individual line segments. So I'll need to do two different parameterizations, two integrals, and add them. Right? So since c is in two pieces, we'll do them separately. So let me label these just so we can see them. Um, the one on the right, I'll call that A. And the one on the top, I'll call that B. And so let's first do A. So if we look at A, again, there are many different parameterizations, but A can be parameterized, parameterized by R of T. And so the Y value goes from negative one to one and the x value sticks at 1. So this can be done with 1i plus tj as t goes from negative 1 to 1. All right, again, it's not the only way to do it, but this is a nice easy way to do it. So then we do r prime. This is 0i plus 1j. So the magnitude of r prime is the square root of 1 Really, it's the square root of 0 squared plus 1 squared. Let me be really pedantic, which is 1. So that mass, let me call that um, the integral over, this can be a bit weird notation, but that's okay. I'll say the integral over A. That way, it's, we're referring to just that curve of x squared plus y squared ds. That turns into the integral from negative 1 to 1. So now for x, I put in x of t, and for y, I put in y of t. So x is 1, so I have 1 squared, and y is t, so that's t squared, that's 1 dt. So just to clarify where all this comes from, let me use a different color. So this guy gets replaced by x of t, which is this thing right up here. That goes right here then the y right there gets replaced by y of t which is this one right there 
that goes right there. And then last but not least, this is our magnitude of r prime. That goes right there. It's just a one, so it doesn't matter, but might as well fill it in just to be really, really official. So then this integral just becomes the integral from negative one to one of t squared dt. Oops, sorry, that's not right. Integral from negative one to one of one plus t squared dt, which is t plus one third t cubed d from negative one to one. Plug in one, I get one plus a third minus, plug in negative one, get negative one. Plug in negative one there, negative one cubed is negative one, so minus a third. And then this is just two and two thirds. Or if you prefer, eight thirds. So then for B, we can do B a bit more briefly, as we'll see why. So B, this is sort of similar. Uh, this can be R of T. So now X goes from negative one to one. And Y goes just to be one. And this is for, uh, sorry, I'm sort of jamming it in here. Negative one less or equal to T less or equal to one. So R prime is one I plus zero J. So the magnitude of R prime is one. And then if we do the integral over b, what we see is we get actually exactly the same thing, which is why this will fit just fine on the remainder of the screen. So this becomes the integral, oh, hold on. This is the integral over b of x squared plus y squared ds. It's the integral from negative one to one. So now the x is the t. So this is t squared plus one squared. All right, this up here was the opposite for the previous one, but they're the same. And then times the one dt. And this is the same thing because it's exact same integral. This is 8 thirds. So the total is 16 thirds. That's the final answer. So the only closing comments I want to make um, are this. So let me just clear a little bit of space, but not too much. So let's say four. Closing note. So A, I mentioned this one is, um, and B is sort of related to this, but A is that the parameterization you choose doesn't matter, right? There may be many ways to parameterize a C and the one you pick will not affect the final answer, right? So the parameterization of C doesn't change the final answer. It might change the way the integral looks, but it won't change the number that you get at the end. And this makes sense in terms of mass, right? Like it doesn't matter which parameterization you use, the mass shouldn't change. But just to reinforce that the integral won't be any different. And B, B is related to this, but I want to mention it because it'll be different for when we do 15.2B, uh, is that the direction that you parameterize doesn't matter. So like when we did the semicircle, we went counterclockwise, but if we had gone clockwise, it would have made no difference. So the direction of C doesn't matter. So it makes no difference there. So um, those are just the final two closing notes, and that's the end of 15.2a.